Hello, welcome to another episode of the Live Cost Construction Experience. Delighted to be joined by the Managing Director of Subby, James Gilbert. James, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm very well, thank you, mate. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem at all. Listen, have to kick it off with how are you? How are you coping with this mad situation, I suppose, first and foremost? Uh, it's a tricky one. I think personally and business-wise, uh, you know, the term essential uh, for work has been has been used so loosely. I think especially for us in construction, no one, no one knows where they stand. Yeah. I mean, it really hasn't been made clear enough. And, you know, I've got some clients that they're continuing, you know, they're doing facilities management and, you know, they're continuing because it's essential. What they, you know, they see it as essential, what they've got to do. But, I mean, some are just struggling. There's no, you can't buy any materials anywhere. There's no supply. Though. So what, what is the lawyer of the land, in, um, James? Because I suppose we, we, we have customers in, in the UK with customers yeah. in Ireland, and there's very different uh, outlooks what's going on at the moment. So in Ireland, we're on complete lockdown. What's going on over there? This is the thing. It, I, I, Kieran, I'd love to be able to tell you, but it is such a split. It's just a split everywhere. You, you've got some of the big house builders. They're shut down. But then I've heard a rumour today that Mesa are opening their sites as of this week, reopening. Um, right. So they lasted what, seven or eight days. Uh, and now they're opening up again. And, you know, it's a risky game. Uh, it's, you've got to be dead sure of what we're doing. But I think the government have not given us anything really to yeah. the point. It's a yeah. major decision. Yeah, it's, it seems to be grey. I mean, it's it's it was pretty pretty clear here like we they just t- said to us listen it's, it's it's locked down and that's it and no one's working and uh we're being told that here it'll be an ease back into it but like depending on you know how essential is the job so you'd imagine the hospitals housing sites are nearing completion stuff like that will go first but we, we, we here, i mean i don't know what you think about this but you know the the whole thing here is stay at home protect the NHS, right? Yeah. So that's the key essential thing. Now, if you're saying about go to work for essential, it's got to be essential. Well, the only thing essential at the moment is the NHS. Yeah. Or maybe you could include fire service, police, you know, the other key public sectors, right? But if it's not that, it's not essential. But it's just not been made clear enough. Yeah. Uh, it's not made clear enough. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we could talk about that one all day. And let's, let's just hope that uh, the, you know, let's just hope that things go to plan. And <laughs> this this does, we get to see a finish line somewhere and we can get back to some sort of uh, normality. Um, before I jump in, into so, because I suppose a lot of our guys be keen to know what it is that you do. Um, wh- where did your construction career start? I'm a chippy by trade. I uh, did my apprenticeship um, local local college, Langley, near a town called Slough here, just outside of London. And uh, I did my years there, you know, and with that, the college kind of aligned us up with companies. So, you know, doing like local residential stuff and first, second fix and, and that kind of that kind of work. And then through family, I had, an, I had an opportunity to move into the film and TV industry. So building, building, building film and television sets. And that's where actually I ended up having my own company uh, in, in the British film industry, which was, uh, you know, wow, what an experience. It was fantastic. Uh, you go from building houses to building spaceships. Uh, <laughs> so it's an interesting one. It's a bit different. Yeah. Any, any big movies? Uh, there's been a few big ones. Yeah, I mean, you know, like working at Pinewood and, you know, the big studios. Yeah, it's been some, been some big ones, some good experiences over the years. Yeah. I mean, what... Running your own company, so I was, we've got similar backgrounds. Actually, I'm chipping myself by trade and decided to diversify out of that. And um, what did you like and dislike about running your own company? I start with I start with the likes because listen, I, I'd still do it now. I loved it. Mm. I loved the fact that I was very lucky. I worked with all my good friends. I, you know, I love that kind of team and the lads and the banter and, and everything that came with being on a construction site, whether it was back in the early days as an apprentice or, or being on film sets. It's all that still that same ethos. It's still that great bit of camaraderie and, and having a good crack. I think, you know, the dislike is what I think we all agree on. It, it's once you get into the realm of your own company, you've got to deal with the politics of running that company. Uh, friends can't remain friends, which is sad. And the way any business goes, I imagine. 
Um, but I, you know, the payments, uh, that's, it's all similar for everyone. I think, I think it's everyone's pet hate. Was that, the, was that the thing then that would stress you out most, the payment side of things, the chase of yeah. money, the constant battle? Exactly that. Exactly that. There was always an excuse. Yeah. Always a reason. And none of them really, they, they weren't worthy. It's just any excuse to not pay. You yeah. know, I think for anyone, I don't see why you, you get up in the middle of winter and go and freeze, uh, freeze your cotton socks outside and you then have to battle over this or that or and it, it just becomes tiresome and, and in the end i think it starts to take out the the, the good bits about it being yeah. with your mates and having a laugh on site and and really you know standing at the end of it and looking at it and think gee we, geez, we really achieved something here this is fantastic and it starts to take away from that it does yeah no i definitely uh, can resonate with you there i suppose um where I mean, how bad did that get for you? Was, did, did it get to a point where you said, I had enough of this and I'm going to go off somewhere else? And were you, did you look at another industry? Or, I mean, how, how, how bad did, did it get? I don't know. I, I think the problem that I had is that I, I, knew, I knew I wanted to do something different. Not out of the industry, but I wanted to do something different. And I've always been a bit of a closet techie and, and liked, you know, see what we could do there and, and, and help people. But I think my mistake was I didn't stop, then start. I, I was starting subby as I was still working on a film at Pinewood. Right. And I just, I was coming back from here at six o'clock at home. I stay in here working till 10, 11, 12 at night. They're back up at six. You couldn't, you can't maintain it. You just yeah. can't. And I had to make a decision in the end. And up until the, yeah, I mean, now I made the right decision. I made the, I made the, I made the decision best for me, what I wanted to do, you know. So what, I mean, I suppose, what, can you explain then for people that don't know, what is Subby, what it is what is it that you do, and what, I suppose, what was your vision when you started Subby? What was the thing that you had? This, what, what is the North Star, I suppose, what I'm trying to get to is when you decide, I'm, I'm going to have a crack at this. Yeah, so I think the key, the key, you know, sentence behind it and what we are is Subby had to be focused on one thing and that was supporting subcontractors. Now, whether that was based on what I've been through or what I've seen, or it was just focused on what can we put in place? Now, at, at the start of it, I didn't even know where to start, but all I knew is that we wanted to do something to help the subbies out there because yeah. I don't have enough support. Um, we kicked the bat off with the Subby Jobs app um, that was a massive learning curve for me. I mean, crikey, you say about building a house, building an app is is a whole nother world. I mean, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know. and and you know, we we moved into a market because we were. Really, I was really focused on construction. You know, that B two B arena. Not so we're staying away from the checker trade side of things, and you, you're battling against a lot of agencies. I mean, thousands of them. Um, and it was a minefield. Uh, and, you know, I did get burnt on that. I did, and, but I put my hands up. I didn't know everything. And we, we've got some lessons that we've learned, and we're going to be bringing that back, um, hopefully this year, obviously, bearing this in mind. But yeah. the Subby Hub, I think, the Subby Hub came from where that, that original I just said to you, that how can we really help them? Well, if we bring a load of them together, we take it into the thousands, these companies are going to give us such better, we're going to have such better buying power. Yeah, We're going to be able to, we're going to be effectively bring that camaraderie and that, that, that support and everything that I said about from site and take it on to another level where because ABC Construction have signed up, and so have a thousand others. They can all benefit from getting a better rate from that supplier. Yeah, no, it makes then, it makes so much sense. And I mean, before it was difficult to do that because it would have relied on you and your black book. But I suppose with technology and the enabler of technology, it makes this far more achievable. Um, so you've got that the subby hub there. I mean, I suppose from a business perspective. What, you look at marketplaces and the marketplaces are notoriously difficult and there's a lot of startups in the marketplace graveyard. Uh, like how did you manage to pull then, I suppose all the subbies together in one, in one side and then you had to then go out to the suppliers and the, um, the, so, so, I suppose the services side of things. Yeah. How did you manage to pull all that together? 
I, listen, it was something again that you know I went into thinking this idea. Hi everyone, my idea is the best idea in the world. And they're all going to go, yeah. Where do we sign? Where do we sign? <laughs> well, let me tell you, I got that wrong as well. It was a much longer. It was a much longer and tougher process. Um, I think the one thing you know. There's other startups out there that are seeing construction as a very open market. We don't use tech, but they are not from construction. They've not been on a building site. They don't get the people, and and that's where they're struggling. And I think over time, with a lot of these partners, because of me being what me and you know I've been there, is we build to build this relationship. And I think ultimately, some of the partners that said no actually was a good thing because they weren't on the same wavelength as, as I wanted them to be and yeah. were, were, didn't see that subby vision. It's not, it's not about a race to the bottom. It's not about bringing, so, oh, well, I'll give you 10,000 people so you can give me a massive discount because the service just won't be the same. Yeah. It's about the general support and what we can do continuously throughout, right? And I, and I think that's what, in the end, one partner – you know joined and then we said well we've got this partner and they yeah and through the network and, and it really grew nicely did, I you, think did you get much uh, resistance on the supplier side yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it, the the more when it comes to the suppliers you know i mean when you're talking about tool and plant hire and and materials and stuff like that it's a real tough one yeah. because it's such a competitive market for them they yeah. forget forget what we're doing, they're, they're already, well, they are, they're all in a race to the bottom. Yeah. And they know, you know, so they think, they look at it kind of like, whoa, you, are we going into another one here just on somewhere else? Um, so it is tough. It is tough. And it's about building relationships, I think, and, and just getting them to understand the vision, the long-term vision for what this is. Yeah, I think you've, you've, you've touched on something really important there as, as well, is that, like, a lot of and we do engage with suppliers as well from from different types of areas but um it it's it doesn't need to be a race at the bottom i mean if you're enabling people to purchase and buy in a unique way um why does that need to be a race at the bottom you're providing more value providing things quicker and more efficiently more transparently um i mean why does that need to be and there is an education process in that and that's probably one of the main challenges i'm sure you're facing we face it as well um on, on a day-to-day you touched on something there abc construction right so who who, who would be a typical subby hub user like who, what type, there's, what types? there's subby hub users i mean the first thing to say about the subby hub is the subby hub is it's free to use and it's you doing it you yeah. go on there and you go and access the insurance companies or the tool and plant hire companies. It's about you doing it. So really it's focused on on the smaller companies. I want everyone from a self-employed chippy who wants to get a cheaper van or wants to get a fuel card, you know, him to go on there. Then it goes up a level. And I think, you know, roughly we're seeing maybe up to around half a million turnover. It's a great yeah. bit of kit for those kind of guys because it's there when they need it. They can, you know, they've not got a massive, let's say they've not got a massive crew of lads working for them. So it's manageable. They can take the time. But it gives it there. It all in one place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What, what, the is. what is the free health check that you offer? Uh, the, the free health check uh, it is simply, it's about subby saving contracts, subcontracts as time and money. You know, we take care of the tasks that subcontractors struggle to find time for. You know, Subby enables these subcontractors to be more efficient and save money. And I, I think that I, this is me in a nutshell because this is when I go back to having the company, this is me every day. No, I ain't got time for it. Order it from there. No, renew that insurance. I haven't got time for it. And there's money walking out the door. Yeah. And they get that. It's not a bad thing. Anyone listening to this who's going, oh, God, that's me. It's not a bad thing because essentially you're concentrating on where you're making money. So mm -hmm. that's your, your, your hourly rate is worth that, right? So it's more important to do where you want to do that making money. But what we come in to do is those tasks. You know, yeah. I'll give you some examples. We get clients ring up and say, look, we've got a, new, we've got a load of new houses to be built. It's in this area. Why don't you get some prices for Velux windows? Yeah, no worries, we'll do it. What we do with the tool, tool and plant hire, great example of just talking about the race to the bottom. There's no point in it just being as cheap as possible because in the end, the warehouse are looking at it and going, well, what's the point of rushing that outside? We're not making any money. So we, we work with the tool and hire companies 
to do tailored packages for the subcontractors. So just to be clear then, James, you're, you're saying that I, I can I can get in contact with you, I'm at ABC Construction, and I can say yeah. to you, James, this is the type of material that I buy, this is the type of plant and, and machinery we, we buy, and you're the one that's going off and doing the, the, the check? Exactly that. We've become an outsourced buyer. Right. So we, we're there, we can go and run all these checks. Now, what we can do is, is we can go, you know, we, I like to turn it around within a week, realistically, because you don't want to hang about. Let's just just do it, and we'll go and do, we'll go and look at everything: your vehicle management, your, your, your just every you know everything that encompasses in that day to day running of that business. We will look at for you. And one of the best things is trying to find new ideas and say, look, you, you know, you could use this bit of software, and it can make you a bit more efficient. Mm. And that's the key because these are all things we want to do. These are all things that I wanted to do, but. You're bogged down staring at drawings yeah. and looking at spreadsheets. You're not you're not doing all these other things, and they're really important. You know, I didn't realize how important they were until I stopped doing it. You know, yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's and you do that for free. That's that's what you're saying. That and then yeah, I suppose cool. it, I, I, the result of that being that you can then present me with some sort of report or something that says, listen, this this is where you're losing money. This is where you're saving money as well. I suppose is a good yeah. is a good thing that you might actually be getting some cracking deals. Yeah, I mean it's 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 interesting sometimes. I think the insurances is always a big one. We can we always manage. We can get them reduced. Uh, you know, one, one of my clients we did is last week. Um, I think it was a fourteen fifteen hundred quid reduction for the year just for the fleet management. Now I know on the scheme of things, all right, but it's still saving money. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's you know on the on the bottom line, it's still saving money. Yeah, that, um, that makes sense. I mean, where where do you see this going? What's 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 the what's the overall plan with this? I think the general the, the 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 general scope here. I want to just continue to grow this this subby hub community because the more guys we can talk to, the more we can understand, and then we can spend our time looking for these new products, looking at new ideas. What can we do, you know, to help the help the smaller guys? And then with the subby buyer, with this with this free health check and everything we're doing there. I actually just had a call this morning. We're doing a joint venture with a software company. And you're now going to have an additional part of the Subby platform where, where there will be a cost to it, which is to be confirmed. But we're now looking at being in a position where risk assessments, method statements, all certifications, all your, all your, all your uh, company's qualifications, all your guys on site, plant hire, machinery, toolbox talks, we can manage it for you from one platform. And I just want, that's the focus here, is to yeah. make everyone's life better. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I and mean, it's a lot, especially the guys on the, on the smaller size, you can't do this on your own. You can't do this on your own. Oh. It's, it's, it's so important to have something that, if, if, if you don't want to bring people into the business, that's fine, I understand that, margins are tight, but partner up with someone, like get exactly help. That. Exactly that. And I think when, so the, the, the company health check that we spoke about, we do that for free. We come back at you with like an Excel spreadsheet, break it down. Here's your cost. Here's our cost. And we go from there. And then after that, we do move on to a retainer basis, which is kind of, you know, up for discussion as to how much you feel you need. But yeah. this is development. We're always there on the end of the phone. The insurances that I just mentioned to you about, Mark, uh, one of my clients, he's got Bridge Fire and Security, um, and he rang me up with all this going on. He's trying to furlough guys and sort everything out. James, the insurance is run out Friday. Sort them out. Yeah. yeah, leave it with me. And I go and get him the reduction. All he gets is Friday morning. He's got to sign the the, the agreement. The, you know, the insurance. Yeah. Great. Makes sense. I mean, where can people go now to find out or learn more about that, James? Okay, so we are we're online. We're 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 at subby.uk.com. Um, and that's where the Subby Hub is. So you would have a login. Once you sign up with us for free, you have a login on there. You can access all the partners. There's a news feed on there, you know, giving you updates from from our accountant partners and what's going on, with, especially with the current situation. Um, second part of the website, you can sign up to get this free company health check organized. So it's just a real quick form, you know, a bit of an overview. What what services do you know? haven't you got time to do yeah. me or one of the team will be in touch and we'll start the process yeah no, that sounds right. excellent we'll certainly push that out, out to our guys I mean that sounds like something that I think everybody given the fact now that 
like the one thing we can't control i had done a great podcast last week with um former irish rugby captain and he talked about leadership and he talked about uh, our ex-manager joe schmidt and who, who was our most successful rugby manager and joe smith's one thing he said was control the controllables and i took yeah. that and i said like okay well the position we're in now the rug is being pulled from underneath us but what can we control one thing you're talking about which i think makes a lot of sense is we can control our costs so let, let's 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 get them under control yeah. and whatever happens right. above us we're not in control of i suppose I think the one thing the one thing that you have to take from this situation it's not great and it and it's a sad and it's a tough situation for everyone in the country but for if you've got a construction business this is a time that i that we've all needed we've all needed someone to force our hand and say two months nothing yeah and what, what you got to say to yourself, and I said, even about Stubby, I, I, as soon as I got to, we got pushed home, I said, right, we're coming out of this better, coming out of this with better process, better understanding of the business, we're going to come out stronger. Yeah. And everyone should be thinking like that. They should, and they, they, they should take some inspiration from 2008, which was the financial meltdown, and have a look at some of the companies that sprung up out of that, like Slack and Uber, Airbnb, WhatsApp, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Um, when the mind has time to think it, it, it can be a dangerous tool exactly that mm. and that's what we're here for at the moment these subby these free health checks and let's see what we can do yeah now james listen we really appreciate the time coming on and, and giving us that no, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll we'll certainly put that out, out, out to our guys as well yeah definitely all right mate listen thanks very oh, much no problem kieran you take care take care everyone take care. Is cheers cheers bye-bye